Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago Edits live stream. My name is Liam, I'm one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers. And I'm very excited today to be doing a live stream all about Adobe AI. So AI stands for artificial intelligence and essentially these are features that have been added to Adobe Lightroom in some of the most recent updates. So we're gonna be exploring what those features are, how you can use them and sharing some of the tools and presets that we've created that take advantage of those advanced tools. Uh, so we'll be diving into that very soon. I can see we've got a lot of familiar names in here in the chat. If you are tuned in live, do jump in the chat and say hi. It's always nice to see who's tuned in. I can see we've got a first time streamer here as well. Julia, welcome to the live stream. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Mary was on first again. Super early bird, Mary. Thank you. I can see we've got Adriana here from uh, Poland as well. Sarah's on. Uh, Giorgio. Welcome all. So like I said, this stream is all about Adobe AI. Uh, AI standing for artificial intelligence. And essentially that is a feature that allows for uh, a computer or software program to uh, make decisions based on the data that's inputted into it. So we're gonna be looking specifically at Adobe AI, which is uh, part of uh, the latest versions of Adobe Lightroom. And they basically are able to scan the image, uh, understand where elements within that image sit. So things like the subject, the background, the sky, um, and other objects within that image. So it can figure out where they are using the data by scanning the image. And then from that, it allows us to do things like mask the image and edit specific areas. So incredibly powerful. Uh, and it really just increases the workflow, makes it much more efficient. For us as photographers, we don't have to do things like switch apps, which typically in the past, we'd have to do our core editing in Lightroom. And then we jump over to Photoshop to do those more specific edits where we're sort of masking areas and using layers and brushes and all that kind of thing. But with Adobe AI and the advanced masking features within Lightroom, we can actually do most of that now straight in Lightroom without needing to switch applications, which is incredible. Uh, and it just allows for more creative control, uh, more flexibility, uh, and just, you know, a better editing experience when it comes to post-production. So really, really exciting features. And we as developers here at Archipelago, we've taken advantage of those features to uh, develop new tools and presets to really push those boundaries as well. So like I said, artificial intelligence is, is fantastic. It can really help us as photographers. But I think the most important thing when we think about AI is not using it uh, to replace us as creatives, as, as you know, artists, but actually using it in conjunction with our creative eye and our artistic vision. Uh, and that's where I think uh, Lightroom have really struck a great balance. It doesn't take over from the photographer from making decisions about their post-production, uh, but it allows for more control and an easier way workflow when it comes to that. So when we talk about AI in relation to Lightroom, it's different from some of the other AI that we might see out there in the photography world, where it's actually editing for you or, you know, culling images, that kind of thing. Adobe AI is simply a way of uh, making the workflow in Lightroom much easier by allowing you to quickly mask and select areas of your photo and make adaptations and things like that. So really, really exciting features. I love the implementation that Adobe have, have, have kind of taken with this. And like I said, we've been able to take advantage of that when it comes to our presets and tools uh, and make some very exciting tools, which I'm sure many of you will know about, but we'll dive in, we'll take a look at some images. I'll edit with some of those tools, talk through kind of the features and how you can use them, answer any questions you might have as well. So if you have got any questions, jump in the chat and let me know. I'll try and answer those live on the stream here as well. Uh, but I've got three amazing images that were submitted to us uh, by photographers. Uh, so I'll be editing with those today. You'll see the name of the photographer in the top left as we go through. Uh, big thank you to the people that have submitted images to us. We've got lots and lots of amazing photos that have been submitted to us. Uh, and if you'd like to submit your images, you can do so by following the link in the description of this video, upload your raw files, and we're gonna choose from those raw files for all of our future live streams as well. And if your image gets picked, you will get a free Archipelago preset collection of your choice. So if you submit it already, keep your eye out. Your image might be in this stream, it might be in a future stream. And if you do see your image pop up, you can reach out to us at our support email, which is support at archipelagopresets.com. And we will get you a free preset collection uh, of your choice. Uh, the link's in the chat there as well for uploading your RAWs. So do take some time and upload them. You can put as many as you want in there. You can revisit that link and you know add more in the future. 
uh, and that's just going to increase the chances that one of your images will get selected. Uh, one of the photographers in the stream today, it's actually their second image that's been selected for a stream, so they're going to get another preset collection. So you could win presets multiple times. So definitely worth submitting your images through and then tuning into the live streams to see if yours is selected. So like I said, link in the description, link in the chat for submitting if you'd like to do so. Uh, but if you've already submitted, keep your eye out. It could appear in this, uh, this live stream or it could be in one of the future ones as well. Uh, and actually, we'll be doing a giveaway in the chat as well. So if you are tuned in live and you haven't submitted and you're thinking, oh, man, I wish I'd submitted so I could potentially win a free preset collection. Well, if you're in the chat, uh, all you need to do is interact in the chat as we go through the stream, uh, throw in your comments, ask questions, all that kind of good stuff. And we'll be choosing some people from the chat to win some free presets at the end of the stream as well. So if you're here, make sure you tune into the chat, uh, throw some stuff in there as you go through and make sure you stick around until the end. We'll announce a winner for a free preset collection at the the end of this stream so if you are tuned in you're in with a chance if you're watching this back on youtube because all of our live streams you can watch back as replays uh do try and get onto a future live stream if you're tuned in live uh, then you'll get the opportunity to win a free preset collection but of course if you don't get the chance uh, you can watch these as replays as well no lauren don't try to stump me come on lauren's throwing in the chat ask all the questions try to stump him that's, that's no way to support me, Lauren. Come on. I'm joking. I like, I like a challenge. Give me a challenge. All right, what's happening in the chat? Uh, Julia, first live stream. Yep, thank you. Hello from Indiana, says Tori. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stephen's on. Hey, Stephen. Uh, we've got Vernon on as well. Lots of people. Hey from Scotland, says Gary. Amy's on as well. Gary said, subscribe to Quest a couple of weeks ago, loving the Glacial set. Yes, Gary, Glacial is absolutely amazing. That's this month's current Quest set. So our subscribers can download Glacial for free uh, through the course of this month. Very, very good. All right, let's take a look at the editing screen here. So the first image I have here from Momad. Uh, Momad was actually featured on a previous Archipelago Edits live stream with a different image as well. So Momad, uh, thank you so much for submitting your amazing images. Lots of beautiful ones in there. Had to pick another one for another stream. Uh, so you get another free preset collection of your choice. So do reach out to us at our support email and we'll sort that out for you. Uh, but you'll see the name of the photographer at the top left here. So Momad's name there, Twig and Vine Photography. You'll also see the EXIF data, so we can see the focal length and you know shutter speed, ISO, all that kind of information, because we're geeks and we like to know that. So that's where that is if you want to find out. Um, but yeah, as I go through the stream, like I said, I've got three images, so two other images that I'll be featuring in this live stream. I'll kind of walk through the uh, Adobe AI functionality, talk about some of our presets and tools that use that functionality, and answer any questions you have as we go. So I'll get on with the, uh, the editing in just a moment. First up, I need a sip of my tea because it is pretty chilly here. I'm in the north of England and it's been rather cold these last couple of weeks. We've had a bit of snow, a bit of hail, lots of wind. Uh, so probably not as bad as other places. I can see there's people tuning in from uh, Canada and lots of other places that are probably much colder. So my apologies for moaning, but um, <laughs> it's definitely been pretty chilly here the last uh, week or so. Hi from Vancouver Island. Very nice. Welcome. Lauren says, I just got my tea brewed Earl Grey. Very nice. I do like an Earl Grey. And did I hear that you got, was it blueberry muffins? I'm, I'm jealous. You got snacks. I should have, I, I can't really eat snacks on the live stream. I don't think I could go with that. Uh, but if I could, I would. Uh, Lee says, Liam, send all the cold down to me in London. Why is it hot in London? Oh, no, it sends all the cold down. No, I don't send the cold down. Don't blame me. All right, so let's get underway. Uh, we'll do a little bit of editing with this image here and walk through the features um, for Adobe AI. So when we talk about Adobe AI, like I said, artificial intelligence is what it stands for. It's the ability for the Lightroom software to make decisions based on the data that it's kind of receiving. So in that case, that's the image. It's able to scan the image and it's able to figure out things like where these, um, these people are in the scene, what the background is, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and it's gonna do that automatically based on that data of the image. So gorgeous photo here from Momad. I'm gonna start by just correcting the, uh, the horizon, just a little bit of straightening there. 
and then let's go ahead and increase the exposure. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to the temperature and then I'm going to go ahead and use one of the Quest sets, Quest 21 Wayfarer SE. So this came out in November uh, to our Quest subscribers and is still available to purchase to our Quest subscribers in the archive store. So if you've joined since then, I know someone said that they've just joined this month, uh, you can actually go back and buy previously released Quest sets as part of your subscription. You can go into the archive store and you can buy those. So if you like what you see here with Quest 21 Wayfarer SE, jump in the archive store and you can purchase that for yourself. So I'm gonna edit this with AQ21 3 Wayfarer SE. And we can see there's quite a transformation there with one click. And that's because this preset not only contains all of the normal things that a preset contain, uh, but it also has built-in masks using that AI functionality. So I've applied the preset uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring the exposure up a little bit more. Around about there looks natural to me. And now if I go into the mask at the top right here, you can see just move this out of the way so I can see properly. There we go. Uh, so we can see in the mask panel, it already has masks applied to the image. So they're part of the preset. When I apply the preset, these masks are also applied. So it's gonna figure out where the background is and where the subject is. And if I hover over this subject mask at the top here, you can see that it's masked out those subjects perfectly just by using that Adobe AI to figure out where those subjects are in the scene. And then we can see the background as also masked perfectly. So this preset applies both of those as part of the actual preset. So one click of the preset and it applies those masks as well. And this is where the power of Adobe AI really comes in because it's just reducing the number of clicks, uh, the number of different kind of things that we need to do in Lightroom to achieve a really powerful and amazing looking result. Uh, so like I said, with one click, it applies that. Now, before I go any further and show you um, what I would do with this image in terms of editing, if I go up to where it says create new mask, we can actually see some of the um, different options, the different things that the Adobe AI can figure out. So first up, select subject. So that's what we've already got on there. It can figure out where that subject is in the photo. And when we say uh, subject, it's not just talking about people. It's talking about the main focal point of your image. So that could be a car, it could be a building, it could be people. Whatever it is, whatever it thinks your subject is, which is generally speaking, uh, the part of the image that is most in focus, uh, that's what it's gonna select. So it's not just people, but in this case, it is uh, people for the subject. And then we've got select sky. So that's gonna selectively um, select the sky and allow us to make amendments simply to that part of the image and not affect the rest of the image at all select background. That's basically the inverse of select subject. This was added um, after the select subject features were added. Uh, a lot of us would, were basically using select subject and then inverting the mask to select the background. But Adobe obviously realized that's what people were doing and said, we'll make it even easier. Let's just have one built in that selects the background. So it does that. It selects everything but your subject of your photo. And then we've got select people. And select people is what I'm going to use on this image uh, in a moment. So if I go ahead, in fact, we'll do that now. So if I say select people, it's gonna scan the image again. It takes a couple of seconds for it to do that. And then it'll find where the people are in the scene. And let's say you've got a group shot at a wedding. It's gonna figure out all of those individual people in that particular photo uh, and list them all as person one through to however many you've got. So in this case, two people, person one, person two, or you can actually mask based on all people. So for this, what I actually want to do is I want to mask for this individual on the right, person two, uh, and specifically what I want to do with this photo is I want to bring the shadows up on that subject's face. So we can see here, uh, he's just got his head pointed down a little bit. It's a little bit in shadow in comparison to person one. And I just want to lift those shadows just to balance that out between the two subjects. So I can go ahead and choose person two, but then there's an extra layer within that. So when I select person two, it then goes ahead and scans the image again. And now it's gonna select as default, the entire person. But then below that, you can see that we have face skin, body skin, and then eyebrows, lips, and even hair. So that individual subject, now you can have these separate masks that affect only those parts of that subject. So in this instance, I don't want to select the entire person. I just want to affect the face skin. So I can tick the little uh, tick box there, 
And you can do multiples. So let's say if you wanted to also do body skin, you can tick that as well and it'll select both masks together. But in this case, I just want to do face skin. And you can see it's done a fairly good job there of masking around the face, uh, ignoring the hair and all the other elements of the image. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and press create mask. And now it's created the mask. There's no uh, effect that's been applied just yet. It's just masked to that area. So it's done the hard work that you would usually have to do with a brush and go around and be really accurate. It's done that part for me. And now I can jump into the sliders here and make amendments that only affect, affect that masked area of the image. So in this case, I'm gonna bring the shadows up. We can see that that's affecting the face there. Uh, maybe around about there. I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit as well not that high, maybe around about there. And I also just want to bring the saturation down just a little bit, just because the shadow uh, was just adding a bit more saturation to that subject's face. So I think about there looks good. I'm just comparing it to the person on the left and now they look nice and balanced. So if I go ahead and hide that, this is without that adjustment and this is with that adjustment. So quite a significant difference there on this image. And all of that has been done in such a simple way uh, by having the AI figure out where that subject is, where their face skin is, mask that out for me. And now I can use a few little adjustments of sliders and boom, we've got a really, really amazing result. So like I said before, uh, you could do this in Lightroom, but you'd have to use the brush and you'd have to go in nice and tight to the subject and kind of brush that around. Quite difficult to do with a, a mouse or a trap pad. Or you'd have to go into Photoshop separately and make those adjustments in there and save it back to Lightroom, which is obviously an extra application to use, uh, a little bit slower in terms of workflow, things like that. So amazing result there just from that one click. Now, like I said, the uh, Wayfarer SE presets, these actually automatically add a subject and background mask as part of the presets. And what we actually did as developers when creating this set is created two additional presets that simply select those masks. So we've got subject mask and we've got background mask. And next to it, it says adjust with a mount slider. So essentially when I was creating this set, I wanted to include masks in the presets, but I also wanted an easy way to adjust them. I didn't want to have to go into the mask panel select the individual layer and then adjust the amount there. So by adding these, when you click once a subject mask, for instance, it's actually gonna do nothing at first because all it's doing is reapplying the subject mask. Uh, and now if we look at the top left where the preset amount slider is, it's now just the preset for the subject mask, which means I can now drag that to the left or to the right and just affect that particular mask. So on this image, uh, it's actually gonna uh, or with these presets, sorry, it's gonna affect the shadows on the subject. So if I bring that up a little bit, maybe around about there, so a little bit of an increase. And now if I use the background mask, and again, that's just isolated the background, and now I can either decrease or increase that for the background effect. So with these presets, that's gonna reduce the contrast uh, and uh, bring out a little bit more color in the background of your images. So if I bring that up to 177, that gives us a nice rich result there with Wayfarer SE. And again, that's just simplifying that process. One click of the preset, the masks get applied. Then you can click the other preset and uh, dial those in using the preset amount slider at the top. All right, so the last thing I do with this photo is I would just play around with the new horizon profile. That's set to 100 as default. I'll probably increase that. You can see this is at a zero, this is at a 200. I think cranked up to almost all the way, maybe about there, 177. That looks really, really nice. And then if we just, hit the little backslash, that's gonna give us the before. And there's the after with Wayfarer SE preset number three, that's part of Quest 21. And then we've made those minor adjustments uh, in the mask panels to adjust the subjects uh, face to match the other subject in the scene. Really, really easy. Uh, the AI is doing all the hard work and then we can actually have that creative control to get the image that we want. Let me show you a little side by side and I'll check in on the chat and see what we're all talking about. Let's have a little look. So Adriana says, AI has been scaring me lately. So it's good to see how much good it actually does for photography community. I 100% agree. There's been some really uh, interesting, but also potentially slightly scary things that have happened with AI in the last couple of years. Um, that really as creatives and you know artists, photographers, whatever it is that we might be, uh, a lot of what we've heard in the news about AI is that actually it's potentially taking away from our work um, as creatives. 
We've seen re recently uh, things happen where uh, an artist who was going to be hired to do a particular project, the people that were hiring them contacted them and said, actually, don't need you anymore. I've just used my Pinterest board, put it through AI and generated something uh, that we're happy with for our artwork. Uh, and actually what they've done is their Pinterest board was made up of all of this artist's work. So they've essentially just created an AI version of this artist's work and not actually used the artist and paid them and had them create something for them, which is very scary. So this is why we felt that it was uh, worth doing a video, a, a live stream on AI to talk a little bit about how Adobe's approach to AI um, and what we're using as far as AI within presets is a little bit different to that and how it's actually going hand in hand with the creative process and giving you as an artist the ability to do what you want to do with the image rather than taking over from you. So yeah, definitely good point uh, about that. There is some, there is lots of uh, very interesting things happening with AI and it's um, definitely something uh, very, very cool as a, a technological advance, advancement, but I think it's also uh, sometimes a little bit worrying for us in terms of is it going to take over from us and i don't think it will because i think you know artists and the creative vision is something that a computer can never fully um, encapsulate but i think having ai as a tool that we can use is a fantastic thing and you can see that within these types of uh, functions all right what else we got uh planning a trip to alberta next year oh yeah sarah is in northern alberta very jealous looks like an amazing place uh, I agree. The Adobe AI masking makes way for faster editing, says Tori. Yep, totally. Uh, let's see. What else? Would this apply to RAW in Photoshop as well? I know they are similar. Yes, pretty much exactly the same. They are. They used to be uh, fairly different pieces of software, but pretty much now Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom are pretty much the same piece of software. So they generally have the same feature set. There's slight differences here and there, but yeah, generally speaking, it will be the same. All right, what else we got? <laughs> Gary says, I for one welcome our robot overlords. <laughs> no, Gary, stop it. Wow, amazing edit, said Tori. Thank you so much. Amazing updates from Lightroom, says Olivia. Yes, I agree. Absolutely amazing. AI can never replace an actual artist's mind, but it sucks that there are people that won't realize that. I 100% agree. I think those are the, the same people that... Uh, probably wouldn't pay an artist what they deserve to be paid uh, because they just generally don't appreciate the craft. Uh, but, you know, it's it's one of those things. I think um, art will always have an incredibly important, it'll play an incredibly important part um, to us as, as mankind. Um, and I think, you know, actually valuing art and artists is so, so important. So something like this, where we get these new tools that enable us to do more with our art, I think is fantastic. So that's why I want to share it. Time saver 100 says Larissa. Yes, absolutely. All right. So let's crack on. Next image I have is this one here from Madison. Uh, this one is a gorgeous photo. This is uh, another Sony photo, actually. I think all three photos are Sony images in today's stream. Uh, that wasn't pre-planned. It's just how it, how it worked out. But another gorgeous photo here, this one by Madison. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of a straighten. We need to bring the exposure up a decent amount. We definitely need to correct the temperature. So I'm adding a lot of uh, warmth to the image. And I think we need a little bit of magenta there as well. Just looking at the skin tones. That's looking good to me. All right, so for this one, let's go ahead and use the current quest set, which is quest 22 glacial. So this was mentioned earlier. This is this month's current quest set. So Archipelago Quest, for those that don't know, it's our preset subscription series. You can subscribe to Quest and become a member for just $8 per month. And each month we release a new set of presets that are free to download uh, for that current month to our subscribers. And this month that is Quest 21 Glacial. We also have uh, a Quest Tools 05 Snowfall, which I'll be using in a little bit uh, as well, which is also right as of right now available to current subscribers as well. So Quest 22 Glacial, let's take a look. I think I'm gonna go for Let's go for a warmer edit on this. I'm going to use a AQ22 preset number two. Let's take a look at the glacial profile. 
I'm going to increase it a little bit. That's just gonna add a little bit more of a punch to the image. Somewhere around there looks good to me. I'm gonna bring the exposure back down a tiny touch. All right, so let's dive in and use a couple of tools. Uh, so actually, first of all, this, this preset collection, a little bit like Wayfair SE, when you apply a preset, it also applies a mask. And that one is the rainbow mask or intensity, as you can see up here. And again, similar sort of setup, you've got the rainbow preset. When you click that, it doesn't do anything as default, but it now applies the, uh, the slider for rainbow specifically. And what rainbow does is it sets the intensity of the saturation in the background of your image. So it's gonna mask around the subjects. It's gonna select just the background of the image, as you can see here. And now when I increase this uh, preset slider, you can see it's gonna increase the saturation in the background of the image without affecting the subjects in the scene. So you're not gonna get skin tones looking oversaturated, any of that kind of stuff. It just lets you add a little bit more of a pop of color to the image or alternatively desaturate the image by dragging it to the left. Uh, but without affecting the subjects at all. So I absolutely love this tool. Very, very cool. This is part of Quest 22 Glacial. So I'm gonna increase that a little bit, give it a little bit more of a rich look with those greens in the background. So that's looking good to me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the Archipelago AI tool set. So talking about the, the kind of tools and the presets that we've created that use these masks, you can see we've got some presets, uh, Quest 21, Quest 22, uh, and some of the new Archipelago sets such as Halite use these masks as part of the presets. But we've also created a dedicated set of AI tools that use all of this amazing functionality and allow you to speed up your workflow with these tools that selectively edit the subject, the sky, and different elements of the scene. Now this is actually a free preset set collection and this is free to our newsletter subscribers so if you subscribe to the archipelago presets newsletter um, you will get to download ai tool set for free so that is uh, by subscribing to the archipelago uh, presets newsletter that's archipelagopresets.com forward slash newsletter hyphen sign up uh, i think the link's going to get thrown in the chat for anyone that hasn't yet signed up go ahead and sign up confirm your email and then you'll be sent a link to download the free ai tool set and this is an amazing set of tools uh, it's actually become a core part of every image that i edit um, and there's a few tools in here that i use pretty much on every single uh, image but yeah like i said some tools that affect the sky some that affect the subject some that affect the whole scene of the photo but all of it uses the AI um, functionality within Lightroom. So let's walk through this set really quickly and I'll use a few of these tools to edit this particular image. So uh, let's start from the top. I'll kind of walk through each of these. The very first one, Subject Shadow Plus. This one selects the subject and simply lifts the shadows on those subjects. So nice and easy, you can give it a click using the mount slider to determine how much you increase the shadows on the subject. Then we have subject sharpen. This is a great one if your subjects are a little bit further away in the scene or a little bit softer, you can select this and then increase the sharpness just on the subjects. Subject Soften does the uh, a little bit of the opposite, and this was a really good one for close-up portraits uh, because what it will do is it will soften the skin of your subject. Uh, so you just select the preset, increase or decrease that to set it exactly where you want, and that can just give you a nice flattering result, a uh, nice sort of smooth skin, that kind of thing. Then we have Skin Hue Minus and Skin Hue Plus. These allow you to adjust the hue of skin tones within the image. So again, it selects the subject and then you can dial the hue of the skin tones. Skin hue minus brings the skin tones more towards the yellow side. Skin hue plus brings it more towards the magenta side. So you can just go ahead and select one of these. I think for this image, I would maybe push it a little bit more towards magenta because it's they're looking, uh, they're looking nice, but I would probably want a little bit more magenta in the skin tones. If I do skin hue plus, and you can see this is it at zero and this is it at 200. So it's very subtle, but you can dial it in exactly where you want. I would probably go around about there, so 85. And that just pushes those skin tones over towards the magenta side. So something that you sometimes find when you're editing an image, you're really happy with the tonality of the overall image, but the skin tones just aren't quite right. Let's say they're a little bit too green or something like that. You can just correct that using the Skin Hue Plus or the Skin Hue Minus and selectively adjust the skin of your subjects. Then we have some sky tools. So we've got Sky Saver. This brings down the exposure of the sky, just bringing back more details. So if you have an overexposed sky, like this one where we've got an overcast day, there's not a lot of de detail up in the sky here. We can use Sky Saver. And this is it at zero. This is it at 200. And you can go for a little bit more of a moody look. I think for this, I would go for... 
uh, maybe about there, so 93. So just bring it down a little bit. Then we've got sky detail. That just adds more clarity and detail to the sky. So if you've got a really dramatic sky or if you want to create a really dramatic sky, you can crank this up and pull more detail into the sky of your image. Uh, for this, I don't think it needs it. I'm gonna go for a little bit more of a subtle edit, but it's a nice tool to have. Then we have sky blue. This one adds a blue hue to the sky. So if you found that the sky is lacking in color, or if you've got a very warm edit that desaturates the blues, and you really like that, but you want some blue in the sky, you can use the sky blue tool here to just bring a blue hue back into the sky. So you can see with this, it looks really nice. Uh, it kind of contrasts nicely against the greens of the foliage. So I'm gonna set that to around about there, 135. And that just now brings a little bit of color back into the sky. And that's a nice complement to the greens. Then we've got hazy light. This one selectively uh, adjusts the highlights in the image, again, not affecting the subject. So it just gives that nice dreamy haze, uh, which is lovely for certain types of images, but it'll only affect the highlights in the background of your image. Then we have watercolor. This uh, increases the saturation of the background, reduces the contrast levels, uh, and gives that really sort of um, watercolor-like uh, look. It's very light and airy, very dreamy. So for this, I might use a little bit of it. If I set it here and bring it down to zero, all the way up to 200, definitely don't want to do 200 on this, uh, but I'm gonna maybe set it around about there. So 40, that just now adds a little bit more color in the background, lifts the shadows a little bit and brings the highlights down there as well. And then we have gold reflector and silver reflector. Uh, and basically these are two variations of the same tool. Um, what they basically do is they select both the subject and the background and create two masks. Uh, the background mask darkens down the background and the subject mask illuminates the subject, which uh, basically replicates the look of using a, a reflector. So actually a reflector in, in real life, when you reflect the light onto the subject, um, you're gonna change the exposure level of the background versus the subject, and this emulates that look. So the silver reflector is a neutral way of doing that. You can see that there, and the gold reflector adds that warmth to the subject that, in terms of emulating the, the bouncing of gold light back onto your subject. So for this, let's use Silver Reflector, but I'm gonna go for something very subtle. I'm gonna bring it to right about there, so 24. So a little bit of an increase in the exposure of the subjects, and now I can bring the overall exposure back down a tiny touch, and now we've got a little bit of a darker background, so it draws the attention to the subjects there. So a few of those tools that we've used on this, uh, we've used the Skin Hue Plus, we've used the Sky Saver, Sky Blue, Watercolor, and Silver Reflector. So you can see now in the mask panel, we've got all of those. Uh, affecting different areas of the image, all with one click of the preset, that's gonna mask the image out, and then we can use the preset amount slider at the top to set the intensity of that. So really simple workflow. Again, this is a free preset collection that you can download when you subscribe to the Archipelago Presets newsletter. Um, so that's the AI tool set. It's indispensable. I think everyone needs to have this in there. Uh, workflow. It works with any of the presets because it's just using the masking panels. Uh, so definitely something that I found myself using really on every single image that I edit. Uh, so let me show you the before. This is the unedited image. Again, this one's by Madison Bronger. Absolutely gorgeous photo. Here's the side by side. Obviously a bit of a transformation because we've increased the exposure and we've corrected the white balance, but we can see We've used those tools just to balance things out, bring more detail into the sky, shift the hues, all that kind of good stuff. All right, there's lots of chat happening. Let me catch up. What are people saying? All right, question here. The rainbow does not want to work and it does, does not seem like I'm lacking the update. What should I do? Let's see. So Bryn says the rainbow tool has changed my life. Yeah, I, I adore it. I've been using it on lots of uh, other sets as well. So you can use that in collaboration with different presets because it's just gonna select the background uh, and adjust the intensity of the saturation in there. I wonder why the tool presets take longer time to affect the image compared to usual presets. Well, the reason for that, Olivia, is because it has to scan the image. It has to do that artificial intelligence. It has to figure out 
what it is that is trying to affect within the image. So whether that's a subject or the background or the sky, it needs to figure out where they are and it needs to mask that area of the image out. So that's going to take a second or so. Depends on your computer as to how you know powerful your computer is, the graphics card, that kind of thing as to how quick that is. But it's always going to be a little bit slower than a regular preset because if you imagine the speed of the time saving, the speed at which it's actually doing it is phenomenal in comparison to what you would be doing, which is going into a brush, zooming into the image, brushing out that particular area of the image as accurate as can and then making the adjustment. This is going to scan the image, go, that is, there's the sky, I've masked it perfectly for you and here you go. So while it takes you know half a second or so to apply some of these tools, it's because it's actually a very, very powerful thing that's happening in the background while it scans the image and works out where that is and masks that for you. So it's definitely a little bit different from a regular preset, but if you think about the comparison and the time saving versus doing that manually or opening Photoshop and doing that in Photoshop, it's a huge time saving. So I think just kind of be forgiving for the fact it takes you know half a second or so to render. And a similar sort of thing, if you sync these edits between lots of images, that's also going to take a lot longer than it would normally would because you know normally all you're doing is correcting sliders increasing exposure you know setting contrast and tone curves and that kind of thing all very very simple so syncing that between lots of images takes you know a second it's almost instant but when you do the AI and you sync that between all the images, of course, it's got to scan each image and figure out where is the subject, where is the sky, where is the background, how am I going to apply these edits? So it's definitely going to take longer. But again, remember, it's going to take much, much less time than it would do to edit all of those photos with your preset and then go through every single one and correct the sky, correct the subject, correct the background. So definitely try to be as forgiving as you can when it comes to the time it takes. I'm sure it will improve over time as Adobe makes it a little bit more streamlined and efficient and obviously processes get better and things like that in the future. But I think it's incredible. I personally think it's amazing what it does in the amount of time that it takes. Um, so yeah, try to be forgiving for that. It is doing a lot in the background. Mary says, wait, we can improve our Lightroom to make masking times less. Yeah, you can. There's there's lots of great um, bits of information out there. Uh, we've made a couple of videos in the past to talk about performance and how you can improve it. But if you go on Adobe's uh, website, it's actually a full article about how to speed up your Lightroom. It talks about how to make the catalog more efficient, how to make your previews better, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of stuff on Adobe's website that talk about how you can improve the efficiency of your uh, your Lightroom, your your catalog. So definitely jump on there and take a look because that will help if you are struggling. But if you have a fairly uh, recent computer, fairly powerful computer, you're probably not going to run into these issues. Uh, it will just take you know a little bit of time for it to render things and sync things, uh, but it's it's certainly not a problem in most cases. All right, so Tori says, love all your edits, Liam. Thank you so much, Tori. Really appreciate that. Tara says, I finally remembered to download the tool set when I saw a post about it in the Facebook group. Excited to try it now. Oh yeah, it's literally gonna be something you use on every image, I'm sure. It's, it's a key part of my workflow. So yeah, definitely have fun with that when you get it downloaded. Love, 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 says Tracy. I'm considering learning more about Lightroom versus Photoshop. Any thoughts? 100%, go for it. Like I said, in the last couple of years, Lightroom has, has uh, come on light years. Um, in terms of the updates and the features that have been added, so much of that stuff used to only be available in Photoshop. You can only really do that type of thing in Photoshop. And so much has been now added to Lightroom. I actually find myself very, very rarely opening Photoshop when it comes to my regular uh, photo editing. It's only really if I need to remove something that's quite challenging and difficult. Uh, but even with that, the new update that came out fairly recently that changes the uh, the spot removal tool, it's no longer a spot removal. It now does uh, full sort of cloning and all that kind of stuff. Even that the, the the kind of the way it works is amazing. It's so impressive, and it's really the results are what you would have had to use Lightroom, uh, Photoshop, sorry, for in the past. Now you can actually do most of that in Lightroom. So definitely take the time, push Lightroom to see what you can do in there. And if you still need to use Photoshop, you know that's fine. But you're going to reduce the amount of time that you need to spend in Photoshop using all these new features. Tara says, note on the syncing, make sure you have the mask box checked because I forgot and wondered why the syncs weren't as good. Yep, that's for sure a top tip. Thank you, Tara.
This is great info, said Tracy. I've gone in and out of Lightroom, but always fall back to Photoshop as I understand the process better. The catalog, that is what I need to understand better. Yeah, I think if you think about Lightroom versus Photoshop, Photoshop is simply a, a, a tool to manipulate an image, whereas Lightroom is your catalog. It's where you store all your photos. You can search for them really easily. You can organize them really easily. You can do things like printing straight from there, uh, as well as doing all the edits. And now that we have these advanced editing tools, we can take over a lot of what Photoshop needed in the past and do that in there as well. So. It's really impressive, all of the things that Lightroom does for us as a photographer. And for me, I actually could live without Photoshop now. I, I could get away with just using Lightroom because it does almost everything that I needed to do. All right, so let me stop rambling. Let's go ahead and edit the last image. This one here from Diana, another gorgeous photo. We've got a nice snow, snowy scene here. Looks like a woodland. Uh, subject in the middle. This is another Sony shot. This one's on 35 mil. So let's use, let's see, what should we use for this? We'll go for Redwood on this one. Um, I'm going to go for Redwood at five. Just going to bring the exposure down a little bit. Uh, white balance is looking uh, pretty good. I'm quite happy with that, but let's play around with the profile. We will definitely like that increased. So this is Redwood five with the profile increased to 171. Somewhere around there looks good to me. Uh, let's chuck on Silver Reflector because I always like to use that. I'm just going to back the intensity off a little bit uh, so we can see if I go in here. Uh, this is the Silver Reflector. If I turn the masks off, this is without and this is with. So fairly subtle, but it just illuminates the subject, darkens down the background, and it just now has a little bit more attention drawn to the subject there. So love that. Uh, so for this edit, I'm going to hide those. I'm going to use a Quest tool set, which is Quest Tools 05 Snowfall. Uh, so Snowfall is a tool that you can actually get as part of Quest right now. So if you are subscribed to Quest already, you can actually go ahead and download that for free as part of this month's um, subscription. Uh, this came out in December and it's an amazing tool that applies a snow overlay to your image and it's doing all this again right here in Lightroom. This was created by Chris who painstakingly hand drew all of the snowflakes uh, in the masking panel and uh, yeah, it's incredible. It's it's such uh, an amazing result and it's so uh, impressive that you can get this straight in Lightroom with literally one click. So this is definitely one of those tools that will take a few seconds to apply. It's a very, very intense um, overlay. It's made up of multiple masks. You're gonna see as we um, dive into the mask panel in a moment, there's lots and lots of masks in here. So it's definitely a processor and graphics card intensive uh, thing to do. So when you apply this, you're gonna see it's gonna take uh, a couple of seconds to render the image to even show you the preview. And then when you apply the preset, it's gonna take a couple of seconds to apply that preset. So I'd, I'd always recommend do all of your edits to this image before you apply the Snowfall preset. Do that as the last step, because once you've applied it, it's quite heavy on the processor to then make adjustments and changes. But I wanna show you this tool and I wanna show you a couple of things that you can do with this tool um, in the masking panel and using some of the, the features within the AI. So let's go ahead and use this. I'm gonna use the version that has missed so there's three versions included. You've got the regular Snowfall, you've got Snowfall plus Mist, and then the bottom one, which is a little snowflake and a person, that one basically masks out the smaller snowflakes on the subject of your image. So uh, that's really handy if you have someone very close to the camera and you don't wanna have those smaller particles of snowflakes over the subject, this will just mask those out, keep the larger ones because they obviously would be close to the camera. Uh, and you essentially, um, you do that by applying it down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the middle preset, which is the one with mist. And we can see this is gonna take a couple of seconds for it to render the preview. And then it's obviously gonna take a couple of seconds for it to actually apply the preset. So you can see the preview appears, it then disappears, and now it's applied the preset. So you can see it's working away in the background to do that. So look at that amazing transformation with one single click. Now, a couple of things that I would do with this. The first thing we're gonna do, if, if you look here, we can see the smaller particles over the subject. I find those a little bit distracting on this particular image. So this is where I can use the bottom preset which will, if I select the mist version first, it's gonna keep the mist. And then if I select the version with the person symbol, that's just gonna mask out those smaller snowflakes uh, on the person. So you can see now those smaller flakes aren't over the subject, they're just in the background. And it's only the larger flakes that are over the subject. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna go up to the mask panel and you can see, look at how many 
mask layers there are, uh, all applied with that uh, single click. Um, so you can see as you hover over each of the little thumbnails here, you can see all of those individual snowflakes painstakingly drawn to give that incredibly realistic look. And one of the things I'm going to do with this particular photo and where the subject is, there's a large snowflake just here covering the subject. So I'm going to go to the L particle, which is the large particles, select that mask. And now I can actually go in and I can in intersect the mask with uh, a brush. So I can go ahead and do that. And then with that, I can brush out an area of the image. Now, this is essentially brushed it in and removed all the others. All I need to do now is go in here and uh, invert it. So now it's gonna remove that particular snowflake and keep all the other large ones. So now it's just gonna get rid of that little bit of a distraction uh, on the subject there. So I can select that there. Uh, and it's gonna allow me to remove that. Let me go ahead and invert it again. There we go. Remove that snowflake, but keep all the others so it looks nice and realistic without the distraction. And then up at the top, we can see we've got the mist. So this is a separate uh, layer within the masking panel that's just the mist. Now, I really like this, but I don't want it to uh, uniformly cover the tree that's here because this is obviously much further forward um, in the in the foreground rather than further away in the background. So it wouldn't be as misty over the top of this tree. So there's a really easy way that we can fix this using the AI. So if I go ahead and uh, again, intersect the mask, but I'm going to intersect it with objects. So objects is a really clever tool because you can basically just brush an object within the photo and Lightroom will figure out what the object is and it's then going to mask that particular object. So if I go ahead and choose that, you can see it activates the brush and now I can simply, I don't have to be super accurate with this, I can just brush where this tree is like that, give it a second to figure it out and now the mask is over the tree. Now this is doing the opposite of what I want because now the, the, the mist is only covering the tree and I want it the other way around. So all I do is go in here and go to the object and untick the invert and now it's going to remove it from the tree and leave it applied to the background of the image. And now what I would do with this is I'd actually then go ahead and duplicate the mist. So I'm going to duplicate and then I'm going to remove the object. So I'm going to select this here and delete object one. And now I've got a version of the mist that covers all the background and a version of the mist that only covers the background that's further away. So with this one, I can bring the uh, intensity, the amount down. So there's a little bit of mist covering that tree. So it looks a little bit more natural. Uh, but then this version of mist, which is in the background, uh, I can have much, much more mist. So I'm going to go for something like maybe that. I don't want it to be too intense. So maybe about there. And then this version uh, around about there. So now we get that really natural result where the tree that's further, that's closer to the subject, close to the camera, doesn't have as much mist covering it, just a little bit. And the trees in the background get much more mist. So if I go ahead and uh, let me just we go down to the bottom of here. And if I turn off those masks, this is without any of that adjustment. And this is with. So quite a big transformation. We get those amazing snowflakes. We get that mist in the background. I've masked out the tree and just applied a little bit of mist over the tree. So we get that nice natural result. Uh, and all of that's being done through the masking panel using Adobe AI to selectively mask out things like the subject and the tree. So now I can go ahead and just make final adjustments to the image. So I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit and I think that's all I would do. So here we go, this is before and this is after and that's using Redwood 5. That's one of the Archipelago presets available at archipelagopresets.com and then used the uh, silver reflector from the AI tool set, free to newsletter subscribers. And then Quest Tools 05 Snowfall. I've used the mist version and the subject masking version, gone into the masking panel, used the object selection and made a, a selective adjustment to that there as well. So again, there's before, there's after. I'll show you the side by side. Amazing transformation, gorgeous, gorgeous photo to begin with. And I think adding that uh, snowfall just really finishes this image off. Uh, in a really convincing and pretty way. Looks amazing, says Elizabeth. Thank you for joining, Elizabeth. Uh, Angelique says, beautiful job per usual. Magical, says Lauren. Beautiful, says my photography. Stunning, says Bryn. Thank you so much. 
I am in awe, says Tracy. I had no idea the amount you could adjust the presets. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so much adjustment that can happen. Uh, let me catch up with some of the previous comments. The snow overlay is an added bonus to winter shoots, makes the dull days more wintry. Yes, I agree completely. <laughs> Chris spent all that time at the North Pole developing it. Yes, he, he did. He spent a lot of time at the North Pole. And then when the budget ran out, he just had to get into his freezer and uh, spend time in there while he developed it. But amazing results. So I think it was worth the, uh, the effort. Uh, Let's have a little look. Seems like snowfall is going to be the only snow my clients get this winter. Well, at least you've got a, a way of creating snow if you don't have any real. Uh, that's that's the benefit for sure. Uh, Liam, how do you get your name slash logo on the top left in Lightroom? We have a tutorial for that. So I made a tutorial to show you how you can do that. Uh, that's on our YouTube. If you search uh, through our tutorials, you'll find that. I can't remember if it's a quick tip or if it's an edit room, but it's definitely in there. You're gonna find um, a tutorial to tell you how you can change. It's called the identity plate. So if you go on our YouTube channel and search for identity plate, you'll find a YouTube video tutorial that I created that shows you how you can do that on your Lightroom so you can get your own branding in there. And you can even change the fonts and the colors of the text at the top right here as well. Wow, this tutorial is so helpful, says Lauren. Thank you so much. All right, so we are at that time. We've done the edits. I'm actually going to go, let's go back. I'm going to go back so we can see the grid. It'll take a second for it to render these couple of uh, images here. But again, thank you so much to the photographers for submitting their images. All of you uh, three photographers there will be getting a free preset collection of your choice. So do reach out to us, support at archipelagopresets.com and we'll sort out that free preset collection for you. Uh, but again, amazing images, absolutely gorgeous. If you have submitted your photo and you haven't yet seen it, don't worry, we'll continue to pull from that pool for future live streams. And if you haven't yet submitted, the link is in the description for you to submit your raw files and we'll keep selecting from those, use them in the live streams. And if you get featured, you will get a free preset collection as well. All right, so shortly we're gonna be announcing a winner for uh, a free preset collection for you that are tuned into the chat and being interacting as we go through. Uh, but while I've got your attention, please give this video a like. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm sure you are already if you're in the chat because you have to be. Uh, but if you aren't yet subscribed, uh, do make sure you subscribe to our channel. Check out some of the other content we've got on here. We've got lots of amazing tutorials, more live streams that you can watch back, all that good stuff. Uh, but in a couple of weeks' time, so on the 30th, I'm going to be doing another live stream and that's going to be an insight into Quest 23, which is called Odeon. Uh, so it's a preset collection developed by me. That's going to be coming out on the 1st of February. I'm going to be showing you a sneak peek of that preset uh, in the next live stream, which is on the 30th of January. So do come and join me for that. Very, very exciting. I have given a little bit of a sneak peek uh, to our Quest subscribers. If you head to the Quest lab, in the, uh, in the menu for our Quest members. You're gonna find a little bit of a post in there that gives you a little bit of an insight. I'm gonna post something else uh, this Friday to show you more about those presets uh, and what to expect from uh, Quest 23. So make sure you're on there. And there we go, Lauren's announced the winners. Thank you so much, Lauren. So Bryn, uh, Mary, and Adriana, you've all won a preset collection of your choice. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much to everyone else for tuning in as well. But congratulations to you three for winning. Do reach out to us on the email that you see there in the chat and we will sort out your free preset collection. Uh, but that's it from me. Like I said, this month's current set, Glacial and the Snowfall uh, overlay presets are available right now to our Quest subscribers. So go and check that out, archipelagoquest.com. Become a subscriber if you aren't already. If you become a member now, you can download both those sets for free as part of your membership. And then come and join me on the 30th for another the live stream where we take a look at quest 23 odeon uh, and there's lots of good stuff involved in that set so definitely come back and check that out if you are available so that's it from me thank you again for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one